Well, good morning. This is a, a little bit of a different format, but it's my pleasure uh, to be here with you to recognize a recipient of the Being a Difference Award. And we knew Melissa was different when she joined us. <laughs> but it's great to have other people recognize her and to take the time to be here with us this morning to tell you a little bit about that. So um, we have two gentlemen here with us from the Center for Public Trust, which is an organization of the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy, or what we refer to as NASPA. Uh, David Costello is the current president, and if you would stand, David, I just got a chance to meet him, current president and CEO, and Alfonso Alexander is the chief relationship officer. I'm going to have to talk to you about that because I want to understand <laughs> how that works, uh, and the incoming president and CEO. So we're delighted to have both of you with us, and let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> really. So again, welcome to Aerospace. We're delighted to have you here with us to recognize Melissa, our, who is our Senior Vice President and General Counsel and Secretary with the NASBA Making, excuse me, Being a Difference Award. It's listening too much to Brian Williams. <laughs> um, the NASBA Center for Public Trust presents their Being a Difference Award to individuals, firms, and organizations for unique contributions to ethical leadership in their profession, community, region, or nation. I was pleased to nominate Melissa for this award as it acknowledges eth ethical leadership. I was really pleased to be notified of her uh, selection, and Melissa has done a great deal in the short time that she's been at Aerospace to continue and improve upon our ethical practices that were initiated by some of her predecessors here at Aerospace. She's worked to ensure that the company meets our ethical standards across the board at all levels. Now, all of you know our Board of Trustees members, and, and none of them are, you know, um, you know, retiring flowers. They're all sort of type A, upfront personalities. And one of the things that Melissa has done a phenomenal job is on making sure that from the very top of our organization, right down to the ethical um, um, online activities that you all have participated in, that we are internally consistent and that we can stand the scrutiny or the light of day, if you will, uh, from having someone come in and say, well, tell me exactly how does this work and, and what do you do and how do you make sure? Uh, and Melissa has initiated some processes, discipline processes, where have I heard that before, uh, from an ethics perspective that starts with our board uh, in making sure that we all understand what their, their involvements are, what their relationships are, and that they understand how important uh, having that objectivity in their relationships is to our being able to do our business and to maintain our reputation. Melissa also serves on the board of directors for the Constitutional Rights Foundation and has personally sponsored seven interns from the CRS here at Aerospace. She works closely with our affinity groups to ensure that they observe corporate policy and practice and embrace the corporate goals for diversity. In our increasingly more complex world, it is becoming harder and harder to determine what is the ethical decision to be made in any number of situations. And you don't have to look far outside to find many counterexamples of what good ethics looks like. Uh, fortunately, uh, with uh, Melissa's leadership, if you look inside, you see lots of examples of exactly what it looks like and what it feels like. Melissa shows us all by her own personal example what ethical behavior is and why it's important. She is doing her part to ensure the future of the company, the community, and the nation uh, to stay on the correct path. That may sound odd, but ethical behavior is not extraordinary on Melissa's part. She is by nature an ethical person. She has no trouble determining what is ethical behavior and what is not. And as I said, she has no trouble on calling us on it, whether it's the corporate officers or the board of trustees. Here at Aerospace, one of our five core values is integrity. You can't have integrity without ethics. And since her arrival two years ago, Melissa has made certain that we never, never waver from our commitment to this value. She set the tone for ethical practices and behavior from the top. And when an organization's employees see the superlative example that someone like Melissa sets, they are inspired to act similarly and have someone to look up to to see how to do it. 
Further, it's not just our employees and management who are positively impacted by her example and dedication. Our customers and their customers, the taxpayers, also benefit from her commitment. Because Melissa insists that the corporation adhere to the highest ethical standards, our customers know that they can trust aerospace to act honorably and in their best interest. I can think of no higher accolade that one can receive from one's business partners than trust, and Melissa is one of those who makes certain that we are always worthy of that trust. So I want to congratulate Melissa on her dedication and for her being selected to be recognized with this award. So, Melissa, well done. So Dave, David or Alfonso, I'm not sure which of you are going to come up, but David, let's turn it over to you. Thank you, Dr. Austin. This, uh, it's quite a thrill and a delight for Alfonso and me to be here with you this morning uh, to honor Melissa Clinton. Uh, it's obvious when uh, you walk into aerospace that ethics matters, that you value trust as a critical element of who you are and what you're about. And my goodness, uh, this country right now is in a crisis of trust, has been, continues to be. But you know what? We, we, we shouldn't just focus on that. Yes, let's, let's get rid of the, the, the people and the companies who, who are uh, propagating that uh, uh, dishonesty and lack of integrity. Let's shine the spotlight on them, but let's not forget the Melissa Clintons. Let's not forget the aerospace corporations and the hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of men and women who every day go to work and do it right. That's why we established uh, the Center for Public Trust back in 2004. We were, quite frankly, getting tired of just reading about the people who are doing the bad things. And, and the TV shows were saturated with the WorldComs and the Enrons, the Adelphias and Tycos and all those companies who were just doing it wrong. I said, gosh, you know, we've got, we've got to counter that because we're all getting painted with that bad brush, that dishonest brush, so that uh, 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 the American public uh, was beginning to distrust anything that had CEO, CPA, uh, attorney, CFO, company name attached to it. We've got to flip that because, as I say, most of us and most Americans, most companies are ethical. They want to do the right thing. They have it as part of their value system. And we established the Center for the Public Trust for that reason, to shine the spotlight on th those honest, decent people and corporations and companies and firms. One of our hallmark programs is the Being a Difference Award. And Being a Difference is, is not just an, uh, an accident that we chose that. Being a difference is different than making a difference. Making a difference, it's quite possible you can make a difference today and, and maybe be one of those bad people tomorrow. <laughs> uh, what, we, uh, what we are trying to emphasize is that being a difference is a lifestyle. It's a mindset. It is purposeful. It's intentional. And it's, it's a mindset saying, I want to do what's right. It's, it's who I am. It's who this company is. And that's what being a difference is all about. And I am so thrilled that, uh, uh, that we're honoring Melissa. I can already tell by having just met her just very briefly uh, uh, about uh, your trust in her and your confidence in her, and I know it's very well founded. And uh, Alf Alfonso Alexander will come up and, and make the award, but thank you for having us here this morning, and we look forward uh, to Melissa receiving this award and to telling people throughout this country about Melissa Clinton and the Aerospace Corporation. Thank you. Thank you, David, and, and I am really honored to uh, be here to present this award, and thank you guys for having us and allowing us to come in and share uh, this time with you in this very important meeting. Uh, you know, my role is to tell you why we selected Melissa for this particular award, and, and, and Dr. Austin really mentioned many of the reasons already, but I want to share with you the things that really stood out for us. We look for people who are making a difference in every environment that they touch, and so if I can just tell you about the things that caught our eye that she's done here. One is the board governance uh, program and the training that she put in place. 
because we see that as making a difference at the top of the organization that can cascade throughout the rest of the organization and really starting there. The second one that we, we were really very excited about is the fact that she's also working to make a difference or be a difference in generations to come. And that's evident through the internship program that she supports and so she's being a difference for future generations there the affinity programs that she's involved in so that she can be a difference for groups that sometimes may be underserved in different environments. So being a difference not just today, but also building a legacy for being a difference tomorrow. And then finally, we look at things that uh, help lend credibility. And so when the CEO of an organization nominates someone, that's an additional level of credibility because who would know that person e even anymore? And so the fact that Dr. Austin made this nomination and gave us great information also let us know that Melissa really is a tone setter. And we saw that even as we walked in the building, we were joking, but even the receptionist uh, downstairs shared with us, you know, I'm glad that Melissa's getting this award because of the impact she makes. When she walks in the room, the room changes. So it reminded me of, of a thermostat. You know, there's a thermometer that measures the room and it basically just takes on the temperature of the room. But a thermostat can measure the room, it can take on that temperature, but it can turn it up or down. And that really is being a difference. So I'm honored again to be here and to give this award to Melissa Clinton. Melissa, would you come up and receive this award on behalf of the NASBA Center for the Public Trust? And congratulations. <laughs> One of the first things um, David and Alfonso did was warn me how heavy that was, but I said, no problem, because I just came from the gym. <laughs> packing. I'm packing under here. Um, I want to thank you um, from the bottom of my heart, uh, David and Alfonso, for being here to represent the center and presenting me with this award. Let me start by admitting I, I, I don't like this sort of public visibility. It, it's not my style. So when um, your vice president, uh, Lisa Exa called me. I said, "You're kidding, right? You're, you're kidding." I think you meant to call Dr. Austin, <laughs> and she said, "No, I meant to call you." Um, so I told her flat out, "The only way I can bring myself to accept this award is if I accept it on behalf of the company I work for because they earned it." Um, so with that, I'd like to thank Dr. Austin for those kind words. Wasn't sure who you were talking about at times, but but thank you for that. Um, senior management and my staff for being here to share this uh, day with me. I am very humbled to have been nominated for this award, let alone to receive it. I understand the Center for the Public Trust had more applicants than ever before this year. Uh, I'm proud to be on the same list of being a difference awardees as Kathleen Edmond, Chief Ethics Officer, Best Buy, Stephen Epstein, CPA and ethics educator, Thomas Hill, CEO and chairman of Kim Ray, and Robbie Narcisse, VP Global Ethics and Business Practice, Pitney Bowes. The reputation that the NASBA Center for the Public Trust has for promoting ethical practices in the corporate arena is well known and well deserved. The fact that such an organization would choose to honor me is a bit startling for two reasons. For starters, I think I'm like most professionals in this room. We're doing our jobs, and we think we're doing it pretty well. But we generally don't think of ourselves as standouts. 
that's always someone else, someone larger than life. The people that we aspire to be but think deep down out of my reach. People like old Dr. Austin. <laughs> Uh, former Defense Secretary Robert Gates provides a larger-than-life example. In June of 2008, Secretary Gates was told there were serious problems in how the Air Force was tracking and handling nuclear weapons. Secretary Gates realized he had to ensure that the proper procedures for handling these very dangerous weapons were always undertaken. He also had to show all levels of the armed forces they were going to be held accountable for their assigned responsibilities. So he made a hard choice. He demanded the resignations of his Air Force Chief of Staff and the Secretary of the Air Force. Both of these men had long distinguished careers and Secretary Gates knew them well and had worked with them for many years. But the nature and seriousness of the issue required him to make a hard ethical choice and he made the correct one. It can be difficult to live up to the standards people such as Secretary Gates represent, and perhaps we really shouldn't be trying to. I think the most ethical leaders were just people who were doing their jobs as well as they could, passing on lessons to others, paying it forward some, t some term it, and just trying to live a productive ethical life. That leads me to the second reason I was somewhat startled to receive this award. It recognizes unique contributions to ethical leadership. That sounds like an award that belongs to aerospace, not me. As the senior vice president and general counsel, it's a given that high ethical standards are to be pursued and more importantly, achieved. One of our core values here is integrity. We cannot operate without it. We wouldn't have the respect of our customers, our partners, and even our competitors if we all did if all we did was pay lip service to it. We don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk. Part of walking the walk is knowing what to do when an employee does something wrong. How we respond in those instances is the most important indicator of where our ethics lie. Aerospace is like any other company. We occasionally have employees who make poor choices. In my two years with the company, when I've had to intervene in such issues, I have been heartened to find that each and every time, each and every time, management, you, this company, have not asked, how do we get out of this? How do we get rid of this? How do we get away with this? Instead, each and every time you've asked me, how do we fix this? Even when fixing it has been an expensive or painful endeavor, you have not backed down. For these reasons, I consider aerospace to be a different kind of organization. We don't just say we're dedicated to ethical behavior, we actually do it. That's why when Lisa called, I told her I could not accept this award on my behalf, but on behalf of aerospace. The message that you and I and all of us here are trying to emphasize is that commitment to the highest ethical practice is a good, true, and smart way to do business. In that vein, Sabrina is taking the opportunity to give our senior managers some new tools that they can use to maintain a continual awareness of ethical practices in their organizations. I think it has something to do with candy, so you'll. Um, <laughs> once again, I'd like to thank the Center for the Public Trust for this reward, which I share with all of you in the room, because achieving what we have in the realm of ethical commitment isn't done by just one person. Thank you very much. Well, on, on that high note, um, the ceremony is now concluded. We do have some refreshments in the back of the room, and don't forget to pick up your packages on the way out. And thank you so much for uh, participating in this event. <laughs>